morning and welcome to the sixth Sunday of Easter here at the Long Island Baptist Church. And we will begin worship shortly after a few announcements this morning. I, uh, tomorrow night, uh, it's doors open at six at Birmingham Eights Outreach. Is that right? Is that right? For bingo. Uh, you should have already made reservations, but a little bird told me that. If you show up with money, they'll probably let you play. Uh, next Sunday, May 12th, we will have a brunch to celebrate the Penfield family. And like the freshmen's will be served. I'm assuming brunch means it will be before worship service, correct? Yeah. 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 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. So show up a little early next week and uh, help celebrate the Penfield family and have some light refreshments. Uh, the following Sunday, May 19th, is Pentecost. We will be having our third Sunday covered dish lunch after worship. More food, the better, as we have uh, kind of grown that part of the ministry. Uh, the leadership board will meet after lunch around 12.45. And starting May, June 5th, we will have the Michael Conway annual display of the AIDS Memorial Quilt. It will run through June 9th. If you'd like to volunteer and assist with the put-up and take down or serving as a great as a greeter, please sign up out in the lobby. And so let us begin our worship.
Take a seat, please. Let us clear our hearts and prepare for our opening prayer. Uh, please bow, bow your heads and let's all join together in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to join together, to sing your praises, hear your word, and spread your love. Thank you, dear Lord, for giving us the opportunity to be a light in a world that is filled with darkness and violence and hatred. Let us be the opposite of what we see around us. Dear Lord, give us the opportunity to use what you have given us to become more than we are. We thank you for the opportunity. Let us be the examples that you ask us to be. In all the Lord's name, amen. Once again, if you could turn in your hymnals to 883. If you can stand, if you're able, please, and join us in the reading of a statement of faith of the United Church of Canada. We are not alone. We believe in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating. Who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be shows you the, the breadth of what happened at General Conference and how that 
um, affects local churches. Um, but as we as we pray today, I'm mindful that while some people are celebrating, there are some people that are struggling, and um, we um, may know that struggle. So I just uh, uh, acknowledge that as we pray this day. Gracious God, as we pray, we center ourselves and worship you this day. May we prepare ourselves to walk in a manner worthy of our calling, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing one another in love. We pray for ourselves today, God, that we may demonstrate the fruit of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our community, for the residents, children, teachers, business owners, and workers, for the clinics and churches. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those who were touched by violence this week. May your healing power be great with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those who seem to have it all together on the outside, but are suffering inside. Guide us to be your holy presence with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those who are graduating and moving into unknown, new, anxious, and hopeful next phases. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. May your love and light shine bright this week in the lost, in the lonely or dark places, people, hearts. We pray this with the hope of our Savior, crucified and risen, who taught us to pray in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours forever. Amen.
So our scripture, our second scripture for today is um, a continuation of the first. So we're reading a whole story um, together. So I want you to think about that. So um, where Kenny left off, Cornelius had just sent these men out. He had been visited um, by the Lord and given a message to go send for Simon Peter. So we're going to pick up with that. About noon the following day, as they were on their journey approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat, and while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven open and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals, as well as reptiles and birds. Then a voice told him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything that is impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and immediately the sheep was taken back up into heaven. While Peter was wondering about the meaning of this vision, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was, and they stopped at the gate. They called out, asking if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you, so get up and go downstairs. Do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. Peter went down and said to the men, I'm the one you're looking for. Why have you come? And the men replied, we have come from Cornelius the centurion. He is a righteous and God-fearing man who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel told him to ask you to come to his house so that he can hear what you have to say. Then Peter invited the men into the house to be his guests. The next day, Peter started out with them, and some of the believers from Joppa went along. The following day, he arrived at Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell on his feet in reverence. But Peter made him get up. Stand up, for I am only a man myself. While talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. And he said to them, you are well aware that it is against our law for Jewish for Jews to associate with or visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising an objection. May I ask why you sent for me? Cornelius answered, Three days ago, I was in my house praying at this hour at three in the afternoon. Suddenly, a man in shining clothes stood before me and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He is a guest at the home of Simon the Tanner, who lives by the sea. So I sent for you immediately, and it was good of you to come. Now we are all here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know 
what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good, good and excuse me, doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses to everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as the judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came upon the whole house and all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. The word of life. Thanks be to God. So this is the lectionary text for today. I expanded it. I mean, I want us to read the whole story. But truly, this Sunday, the Sunday after our denominations general conference voted with 93% affirming to remove the harmful language in our book of discipline about LGBTQ plus persons, including the possibility of their ordination, and to allow, but not to force, clergy to perform same-gender weddings. After that Sunday, this story in Acts 10 where Peter understands God's message that there is to be no partiality between people or groups. This is one of the four scriptures that many churches will read today. I didn't plan this. Now, I hoped that it would be so as I chose texts between Easter and Pentecost, scriptures that deal with the risen Christ. And I see the risen Christ in this movement in the United Methodist Church because I see people who have been a part of the church all their lives now being valued in a different way. I see the risen Christ in people who have had a call and gifts for ministry that now have a cleared pathway for ordination where barriers have been up so long. And that includes Cam Furlow, who we used to know as Kim, who we su have supported in seminary for the past three years, who graduates from Cameron School of Theology this Saturday. Cameron's call had been squelched for years and years, causing them anguish and unhappiness, and even lots of doubt in God and self. I've seen the risen Christ as people have become aware of the gifts of God, which sometimes defy human logic or our society's norms. I've seen thinking and understanding in faith evolve, as it should. There are some who have similar stories to Peter's, where boundaries have divided people, where barriers and walls have been kept up, and the impure or the unclean, all of that seems very set. And then 
The Spirit of God melts them, sweeps them away with the breath of renewal. Peter's vision and hearing God's voice showed him what foods that were considered impure or unclean, God calls clean and encourages Peter to stand up, kill, and eat. Although there are still words in the scriptures that say they are prohibited. Peter has this vision at the same time that these men are sent from Cornelius, a centurion, a Gentile. Now, part of being an unclean Gentile is that they were people who were uncircumcised. Now, some of you will remember about 10 years ago, I did a sermon series on some of Paul's writings that went in depth on circumcision. I am not doing that today. If you want to know more about circumcision, we can talk after worship. Circumcision is also prescribed in the Torah. But God is communicating, as with the food, that these are not impure, those who have not been circumcised. These people are as you, made in my image. So with this, Peter shares the good news of Jesus Christ, crucified and risen. And this is the same message, the same theme as last week when we read about the paraplegic at the temple gate. And two weeks ago when Father Jose preached about the story of the eunuch and Philip, people who were seen in society as unclean are given wholeness through the power of a crucified and risen Savior. And water, and before water can be brought for the baptism, the Holy Spirit pours out on all the people there. Amen. Jews and Gentiles. Hearing Peter speak in Cornelius, a Gentile's home. Now I know that there are many of you that have been waiting for the United Methodist Church to catch up with the Holy Spirit and, I under, and understand you as clean, as pure, as not profane, as made in the image of God. And I'm sorry that it has taken so long. The church is not God, thank God. But we are the body of Christ. And when we know better, we do better. What I also know is that many of us in our congregation have friends and family, and we're just living in a society that, are, that don't quite understand, aren't in the same place when it comes to sexual orientation. Honestly, we all have some biases that we cling to on the perspective of others. Phobias and isms that we deal with, or I hope we're dealing with them. But often in the South, we create rules and enforce bans on people who some in our society see as other, as impure, as unclean. They're holding on to phrases in scripture out of context, romanticized history, and fear. I know because I too am in this place often, and I have to practice, because it doesn't always come natural, practice awareness of my biases and fear, praying that God would strip away anything that isn't revealed by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We must all practice that. And in dealing with friends and neighbors who ridicule our church for being reconciling 
or for now being a part of a denomination that has sought to do away with the barriers and bans on human sexuality, I want you to be encouraged. Be encouraged by Peter and the story in Acts. After this, in chapter 11, Peter goes back to Jerusalem. And some of the believers, it says, circumcised believers, question him for baptizing Cornelius in his household. And they're especially bothered that he was in a Gentile's house and ate with them. But Peter tells them what happened. He tells them about the vision and how he heard God say, I show no partiality. And they believe him, which is he. And they rejoice with him in saying, God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. But in a couple of weeks, we will celebrate Pentecost, which we often call the birthday of the church, because it is when the Holy Spirit, which was promised by Jesus, comes upon the people with the power and the heart of God's love, and rapidly, people turn their lives, their whole lives, of sharing the, to sharing this love with others. And this book of Acts, called Acts of the Apostles, these are the stories of the church expanding to include more and more. And when something expands, it has to have more room to grow. And so, previously understood, barriers and walls have to come down. But as I said, we are slow to receive this. And if we don't allow for the Spirit to speak to us, we may even try to replace those walls and barriers. Today, I want to celebrate the movement of the Holy Spirit and to be encouraged that the sign in our churchyard that proclaims open minds, open hearts, open doors has more truth to it today. I am proud to serve a church that as the first reconciling United Methodist Church in Alabama took a big swing before I got here, before y'all even knew me, knowing that God's grace was with you, was with us, even when the status quo wasn't. And we take the story in Acts and these movements that we have witnessed and let them encourage us as God shows and calls us to a life of no partiality, calling no one unclean or impure and calling us to remove more barriers and walls in expanding the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us continue the momentum of our worship by opening our hymnals in preparation to join in song. Please open them to page 121 and stand if you're able. The hymn is There's a Whiteness in God's Mercy.
seated. I'd like to call the ushers forward or and let us give our auditory prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, now is the time for us to do our part. Let us give unto you our gifts, dear Heavenly Father, gifts that will be, that will echo far greater than anything else that we can do because we place them in your hands. Thank you for this opportunity. Let us expand our gifts. All in your name. Amen. Jesus 
Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. You lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image. Breathe into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Um, our hymn is an <coughs> insert that's in your um, pews. It's like the laminated card for um, communion, except for it says for everyone to learn it. It's actually a piece of music. We've sung this a couple of times. It's been a while. Um, but let us stand in body or in spirit to sing together.
May we go forth in justice and joy, knowing that God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, walks with us. Amen. Amen.